And so let's offer a prayer. Let us pray. God of all life, creator of sun and rain, mountains and valleys, moon and earth and stars, we thank you for your recreation of this new day. We praise you for gift, the gift of life itself. And we honour you for the new life that you bring in Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Lord. Accept our worship now, in song and in silence, word and deed, offered through Jesus Christ, our friend, our Saviour, our God. Amen. September sees the beginning of the season of creation, uh, a season that's celebrated across the world by churches of all kinds of different backgrounds. So we can think of the Christians in Pakistan, in all the challenges following the monsoons, as they remember their creator. We can think of the Christians in East Africa as they face the, the hardest drought and famine for many years. We can think of Christians in Germany meeting for the World Council of Churches, young and old from so many different traditions, we can think of the Christians in Ukraine as they suffer the continued warfare. And all these many Christians are thinking of our relationship to the planet, to God's creation. The season begins on the 1st of September and carries on to the 4th of October which is St. Francis's day, and, and St. Francis was that great saint who spoke to the birds and cared for every part of creation, his great canticle of praise. But this sense of relationship with uh, the whole of the natural order goes back to the Bible witness and one of the great psalms that speaks of of creation, reminding us of the Creator, is Psalm 19. And we're going to use that now, and I invite you to, to use that response uh, after each section. Listen to, cre to creation, tell of God, listen to God's Word today. Let's listen to our psalm. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of God's hand. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. Listen to creation, tell of God. Listen to God's word today. They have no speech, they use no words. No sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out to all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Listen to creation, tell of God. Listen to God's word today. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the law are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Listen to creation, tell of God. Listen to God's word today. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. 
the decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. Listen to creation, tell of God. Listen to God's word today. Amen. Well, our readings today are in part about listening. We'll hear a gospel reading about the sower and the sowing, scattering the seed, and Jesus ends by challenging the crowd to listen, if they have ears, to listen. But before that, we hear, hear from the book of Exodus, where Moses, who is, has escaped from Egypt, is looking after Jethro's um, sheep, the flock, and he sees this amazing sight, and he's drawn to it. The story of the burning bush, which is the key story and the key image being used by the season of creation today. Let's listen for God's word. First reading comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard, heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them out, up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are impressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people to the, of the Israelites out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign of, to you that it is I who have spent, sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. This is the word of the Lord. 